Hello and welcome to the next lecture in the course on introduction to uh, computer and network performance analysis using queuing systems. I am Professor Varsha Apte and I am a faculty member in the Department of Computer Science and Engine Engineering IIT Bombay. So, uh, we will continue uh, from the previous lecture where we were uh, we had we were sort of defining closed Jackson queuing networks. We had also learnt Sevchik Mitrani theorem, Sevchik Mitrani arrival theorem. Please go back and revise that if uh, you do not remember because we will be using that in this lecture. And using this we can uh, derive a very beautiful method called mean value analysis for finding all the metrics of the uh, closed Jackson queuing networks. So, let us get started. Just to remind these are the parameters again this is just for your reference I will not go over everything. I will just remind everybody of VI which is the relative visit count. Again uh, please go back and refer to the previous lecture to recall what a relative visit count is and we have the service demand as usual. Uh, as for both open and queuing networks it is defined in the same way okay, and uh, rest of the parameters are as before. Uh, now let us uh, go over a little slowly on the metrics that the mean value analysis is going to derive. Uh, so remember that in closed queuing networks uh, each of the metrics are defined for a load level m. This is of course similar to all of these metrics in open queuing networks okay, in open uh, everything is a function of uh, lambda, the arrival rate, right? Uh, so we have uh, we we don't uh, uh, write the metrics with the lambda parameter in the parenthesis like we are writing here. There is a reason for that, uh, but uh, all the open queuing network and open queuing system metrics are functions of all the parameters, including lambda. Um, and here uh, also it's the same thing. Of course, it's a function of all these parameters. Uh, but we particularly express uh, the metrics in the terms of this load parameter m and we will you will see why. Okay. So, n i m is the average number of customers at node i at load level m, uh, lambda i m is the throughput at node i, everything here is at load level m, uh, meaning the number of remember load level is something we say for this number of clients or uh, requests, this is also called load level. Because of course, when m increases, load increases, so it's like a level of the load. Okay? So that is why we call it often the load level. So um, response time at each node, uh, uh, the system throughput, okay, the throughput along the branch that represents completion of a request. This is important because in closed queuing networks, there isn't an obvious exit, right? There isn't an exit out of the system. So we have to pick a branch. In this case, it is this branch which we say is represents the system throughput. In this case, we say that this is the branch that represents system throughput and based on that, uh, it is basically just this throughput across this branch uh, will be the uh, lambda sys. Okay. Then we have system response time, uh, which is the response time through the whole uh, network and then we have cycle time. In the case of uh, which is this is basically equal to system uh, response time if no client node. Okay. Um, and in, in case of uh, uh, think time also basically this is 0 if no client node. Basically this parameter is not re relevant if a explicit client node is not being modeled. Okay. Uh, so uh, another thing I would like to point out is that the lambda sys and the r sys and therefore of course they are cycle. Um, these are metrics that are actually dependent on which branch or which arc in this queuing network graph that you selected as your uh, system throughput arc. Okay. So, this is you lambda sys if for some bizarre reason you should never do that there is no uh, reason to do that. But if you say that this represents completion, okay, if this is completion, if this arc represents completion then your lambda sys will change. Okay. So, usually we do not do such uh, non-intuitive things, the branch that represents completion in a closed queuing network is dependent on the uh, model itself, what is the model that you were uh, original model that you are modeling based on that system 
the branch that represents the completion will be kind of obvious and that is what represents this lambda cis uh, that is what uh, the lambda cis and r cis is dependent on ok. All the other ones the ni uh, uh, the especially the number of average number of customers at node i and uh, also utilization uh, is not written here because it is not a part of uh, mean value analysis but utilization is a parameter. Uh, so, this is also independent of of, uh, um, of the branch chosen for uh, request completion ok. Okay, so, let us get started with mean value analysis. So, what is it? It is a method to find all the metri metrics without having to derive probability distribution. Of course, when I when I say all the metrics we only find averages or means because that is the whole point we are doing mean value analysis. Uh, but the point is that we can uh, work only with the means. Uh, that makes the entire algorithm a little bit intuitive and more importantly it makes it efficient and we never have to derive uh, for example, we never have to derive this. So, the probability uh, that the number of customers uh, at uh, uh, node i uh, when the load level is m uh, this is never required. In fact, n i m uh, you know we do not we do not go through this at all and n i uh, just denotes averages, denotes uh, average. It does not denote the random variable, it just denotes the average. So, we do not go through the random variable and, and probability distribution and so on, uh, we can directly work in means. Um, yeah, so this is important because the other there is a method which uses distributions and this is very uh, computationally costly. Okay. Uh, Sevchik Mitrani theorem is extremely critical in deriving mean value analysis. And this is the heart remember the heart of the Sevchik Mitrani theorem is that uh, the uh, this will also apply for average the average number of customers at a node i seen by an arrival when the load level in the queuing network is uh, m is the same as the unconditional average at that same node when the load level is one less ok. So, uh, it is kind of should be very intuitive at this point of time that this relationship is suggesting a basically a recursive method to find to to get your metrics ok. When something at load level m can be expressed as some other uh, metric at load level m minus 1, uh, one hopes that this can continue and maybe we can get something at uh, we can we can find uh, what n i 0 is. So, so n i 0 of course is just going to be 0 for all i ok. We, we will know this and maybe we will be able to uh, based on this be able to go back uh, step by step from maybe from n i 0 I can get n i 1, uh, I can get then n i 1 I can get n i 2 and if I go this way I should be able to get this metric at any load level ok. And from this metric hopefully I can get all the other metrics ok. So, let us start. So, let us first start uh, clearly the base case is actually quite easy the n i 0 when there is nothing in the network the average number of customers at each node is also going to be 0. So, this is just the base case ok. So, let us now assume that we know uh, n i m minus 1 for all i ok. That means, I know the average number of requests at stations i station all stations i when total number of requests in the queuing network is m minus 1. Where can I go from here ok. Uh, let us remember Sevchik Mitrani theorem. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, this gives us a major hint to be able to write r i at m. What is this? This is the average response time at node i when load level is, is m. Okay. So, to reason through this uh, it is a standard old reasoning we can do right. So, suppose uh, there were 3 customers here in the queue sorry. So, I am showing 4 here in the queue and 1 in the server ok. So, there are 5 customers in the system here ok and now a request arrives ok. Suppose m is equal to 10 the request arrives ok. Uh, the point is I am giving an example of 4 plus 1, but if we have to do the calculation we have to figure out 
what is the average here what is this going what is this request going to see what will the arriving request see okay if we if we know what it sees here then we know that each of this request takes tau 1 amount of time average time is tau 1 we know that the service time here is exponential so uh, that implies that remaining time is also equal to tau tau 1 here so if we know if we if we know that the uh, what the the average that i expected here is 4 in the queue and 1 in the system then i can simply say that uh, the uh, response time of the arriving request is going to be 5 multiplied by tau 1 for those that are already in the system plus its own tau 1 right plus its own request so because it will come and queue at the end here it will come and queue here and that will be the sixth request okay so uh, so this is very uh, very intuitive uh, so rim we can simply write as first thing we will say that it is going to be whatever it sees right at arrival what it sees at this load level plus itself multiplied by tau i right. These are all the customers in the system given that the remaining service time uh, has the same mean as the overall service time I have to just take all the customers in the system and multiply it by tau i okay, to get its waiting time. and then add its own service time. So, what is this going to be n i a m tau i plus tau i this is going to be the waiting time and this is going to be the service. Now, here is where Sevchik Mitrani theorem magically helps us ok. We can simply replace this n i n a i m by n i m minus 1 plus 1 multiplied by tau i right. So, I had said that we, we have to assume we know this. So, if we know this I have r i m for every single station ok. There is one uh, special case here that at the client node actually none of this matters r c m is going to remain h uh, for all m right because there is no queuing here it is just think time. Okay, it is just think time uh, once the request enters the user's uh, mind the user is going to think uh, the same amount of time and there is no queuing at the user right uh, because we do not uh, ex expect that the user is going to issue multiple requests uh, before waiting for the response. So, all those things are not there we have only one request uh, that the user has issued user will wait for the response and once the response comes, user will think. So, there is no queuing this always remains h. But for the other nodes where there is queuing and remember we also have the FCFS assumption first come first serve. So, this is basically the formula for response time when uh, when the discipline is FCFS ok. So, this is awesome from n i minus 1 I went to some metric at r i m ok. I still have to go remember that to finish the recursion I will have to go from here to n i m right I need to get to n i m only then the recursion is complete. Okay, so, this is simply uh, repeating that for your reference later whatever we derived r i m is equal to 1 plus n i m minus 1 multiplied by tau i and r c m is equal to just be think time for all load levels. Okay, now, we have we have r i m for all uh, i and m right okay. uh, sorry for all i okay. and uh, we need to uh, find the other matrix. Okay. So, from r i m remember that I have my v i's which are relative visit counts ok. I can find my r cycle time ok at load level m as a simple summation of summation i equal to um, one to n if there are n stations in the network it will be i equal to one to n v i r i m right. So, remember I have r c I have r 1 I have r 2 I have everything here let us say this is i equal to 1 this is uh, sorry this is i equal to yeah we can also go from 0 to 2 in this case right 
So, this will be i equal to 0, this is 1 and 2, but if we are numbering the stations as 1 to n, then we will go like this. Okay. Essentially, this has to be the summation over all the stations. Okay. All stations including client node. So, now I have the R cycle time of the whole network. Okay. Now, remember that uh, just like in the closed queuing system with single server, we had defined a very interesting little slaw region. Uh, we will define the same kind of little slaw region here. Remember that this is our system throughput arc. So, we will define the little slaw region like this. Okay. So, this the request is uh, exiting and entering instantaneously, the flow through this is lambda sys and the time from this entering to doing all of this cycle here and then exiting here is R sys, R, R cycle. Right. And if this is a little slow region, we know that inside the region there is a fixed number of M requests okay, that is never going to change because it is a closed queuing network. So, I can apply little slow and I can say M is equal to R cycle M multiplied by lambda sys M. Okay. So, from uh, here now the metric that I get is lambda sys M is equal to M by R cycle M. Okay, so, we got system throughput. Now, let us see what we can get. Okay, this is again just reinforcing that that you get uh, you apply little slaw to that region. Okay, again I will just draw the region here again. This is the region through which you apply little slaw and you get uh, lambda sys M is equal to M divided by R cycle M. So, we started from n i m minus 1, we got r i m at all the nodes, we, we got r cycle m um, and of course, we get r sys m also. Uh, if the system time is going to be different from the cycle time, you just have to leave out the think time and r sys m is going to be just the uh, uh, the summation of the visit counts and the per visit response times for all the nodes except the think node. Okay. So, you can always once you have R cycle time you can find R sys m as R cycle m minus h. If h is 0 then the two are going to be the same otherwise you will actually get the system response time okay. and this is just summarizing what we just talked about. Now, what do we have? Again, recall we started from Ni minus M minus 1, uh, we got Ri M, we got Ri M, uh, we got uh, from Ri M, we got R cycle M, we got R sys M, and we got lambda sys M, okay, the whole throughput this one. Okay. Now, what is the next thing that we can get? Remember that uh, the node throughput, this was something we had done in open queuing network also, this still applies. Uh, the node throughput lambda i m is going to be nothing but the number of visits to that node multiplied by the system throughput. right? So, suppose that the way this uh, circulation uh, multiple visits to server 1 and server 2 happens for this network is such that there are um, 3 visits to this uh, web server and 2 visits to the let us say this is a database server. So, if the system throughput right now is 100 requests per second, suppose that is 100 requests per second, uh, it is sort of intuitive that to finish this 100 requests per second here, we are going to have to do 300 requests per second here because each visit, each each request creates 3 visits here, right? each request creates 3 visits here and creates 2 visits here. So, this is going to be uh, 200 requests per second and this is going to be 300 requests per second. Right. So, uh, it is just uh, because the overall output here is 100, you need to be able to do 300 requests here that is what you must be doing because each of these requests visited 3 times here and 2 times here. Okay. So, this is uh, very straightforward vi multiplied by uh, lambda system for all 
i equal to 1 to n. Okay. Uh, once you have the node throughput, now it is very interesting. Okay. Now you can, now what you have here is you have this lambda 1 and you have the lambda 2. Okay. And now again little slaw, you can just see here how beautifully so many uh, laws are coming to our rescue. Right. We started with Sevchik Mitrani theorem to actually apply the recursion and then Little's law we are applying either to the whole region or now we can apply Little's law to just the nodes. Okay. If we apply Little's law to the nodes, okay, Little's law to each node i, okay, what do you get? Uh, throughput through the system is lambda 2. So, n i m okay, is going to be equal to I have lambda m and remember previously itself I got r i m. And lo and behold we have n i m we started with n i minus 1 and we did all of the steps and we have n i m that means the recursion is complete. right? So, step by step we use all the, the tricks that we know uh, to use, uh, there is nothing new other than Sevchik Mitrani, there is no other law that we use, we actually just keep using Little's law and just some common sense uh, and that is how we start from Ni-1 and get Nim. Okay. So, this is again just uh, repeating what I said earlier, the node throughput is uh, visit count multiplied by system throughput, then we apply Little's law at the node level. Uh, and then the recursion is complete except again we simply just have to state the base case properly n i uh, going, uh, 0 is going to be 0 for all i and then uh, we start from uh, this and then go to uh, basically we will get um, r 1 uh, r i with just one customer we will get uh, with the n i 0 it will be equal to n i 0 plus 1 tau i and as expected n i 0 is 0, so you should get tau i. Right? So, with one uh, customer in the system all the response times are simply going to be equal to the service times and that is what the recursion tells you also. Okay. So, at a glance uh, this is just repeating that uh, n i equal to 0, n i 0 equal to 0 is the uh, base case, then we have to know uh, assume that n i m minus 1 is known, we get the uh, node response times using this part is the one that uses Sevchik Mitrani theorem. Okay, to be just be able to substitute n i minus uh, n i m minus 1 and that is the beauty here and that is uh, what we are getting from Sevchik Mitrani theorem. Uh, of course, r i m is equal to h for anything that is a client node. Uh, we get cycle time by just common sense that uh, you know we have to multiply by the visits and that is you get the cycle time that way. Uh, here this is little slaw to the whole region ok. This is again common sense if uh, system throughput is lambda cis uh, you just have to multiply it by vi's to get the node throughput. And this part is Little's law for single node. Okay, so again, recursion is complete, um, and we started with NIM minus one and derived NIM, and we have a base case. Okay, so uh, this actually completes uh, the theory of uh, closed queuing networks that we are going to look at. And uh, the next lecture uh, will be some examples of this mean value analysis and uh, we will actually also uh, make some closing remarks for the course in the next uh, lecture because it will be the last lecture of this course. Um, so, thank you and uh,